Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam Lund and in this video we're going to react to Dr. David Sinclair supplement uh, stack. So we'll be looking at this video that is actually the newest one that I found in 2022 in January and we'll be looking at what supplements does it take and I'll just, you know, give you my comments about it. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So here's the video, it's on the reverse aging revolution uh, podcast basically. And it's a clip, short clip uh, from that. Well, I still use Inside Tracker, and uh, I just posted on Instagram that I think I broke the record at the company. Um, I didn't realize I was, but but they saw my post and they said, "Holy crap! You know, you're a decade younger, more than a decade actually." Um, so that that was pretty cool. So what have I done to achieve this? Well, it is in the book, and I think most of you have read it. Uh, but I have changed some some things since 2019, and I've added some things. I've taken some things away. What I've added are uh, a lake acid. Um, I'm taking uh, some spermidine now. Uh, day. Interesting. So, <laughs> um, the first thing that I uh, heard from here is uh, spermidine which uh, there is some you know studies finding that the dietary spermidine intake is linked to reduced mortality and that one particular study where it was uh, 11 milligrams if you consume more than that in your from your diet then that is uh, linked to almost like 30 percent reduced all cause mortality uh, epidemiology study uh, but still a pretty long study as well uh, but he said he's taking one gram a day if i'm not mistaken let's uh, hear it again spermidine now a gram a day Okay, so yeah, one gram of spermidine is, you know, that's quite a lot <laughs> compared to the 11 milligrams that you may need to take. I don't know if it's, uh, if I heard it correct, but uh, I mean, one gram is a whole lot more than 11 milligrams. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's correct, uh, because I don't think that you would need to take more than that. Uh, you would just want to get a lot above 11 milligrams. And, you know, it's hard, it's not that easy to get 100% of that from just diet, unless you're eating like wheat germ and um, cheddar cheese and those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I do think that the yeah, spermidine is a good supplement. Um, it's an autology booster and has like other anti-inflammatory benefits as well. I do take it myself. Four, I do only take like four milligrams a day because I'm getting regressed from, from my diet. But ideally, we just want to get 11 milligrams a day at least. Um, I mean, there's no studies that uh, that are aware of that look at, you know, what happens if you take one gram a day, which is interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe like one gram is probably like an overkill. I'm not sure how does he get it or what sources does it get from. All of it. Uh, some cell so physique and quercetin we discovered back in 2003 were lifespan extending molecules and those are kind of not just activates or one like resveratrol does but also kill off senescent cells at high doses so I've, I've done that and i'm monitoring myself also epigenetically uh, to see if i'm actually reversing my epigenetic age which you know for my book is, is one number that's very important so uh, fisetin and quercetin uh, yes they're senolytics um they do kill off senescent cells and they can also extend lifespans in like, other species there's no human studies that i'm aware of <laughs> that uh, that look at how they affect all cause mortality or um, longevity, uh, but I do take quercetin and fisetin not every day, but uh, quite regularly. The funny, the good thing about uh, quercetin is also that it uh, inhibits uh, CD38, which is this um, glycoprotein that uh, is like increased when you're under inflammation, and it also uh, consumes NAD. It's one of the biggest consumers of NAD and uh, one of the biggest reasons why you see a decrease in your NAD levels as you get older because of CD38 goes up um, and yeah quercetin is a good let's say counter measurement or counter um, actor against CD38 and of course the senescent cells you get older you increase oxidative stress that increases senescent cells and senescent cells are just you know gonna be they're like zombie cells that uh, spread inflammation to the neighboring cells and it's kind of this you know swarm <laughs> swarm effect of zombie cells so you know I at least like irregularly taking quercetin and fisetin can be good but i wouldn't take like you know fisetin and quercetin let's say every day because uh they do may have like some you know negative side effects as well by like you know maybe causing some collateral damage or even like you know they uh, may also inhibit like mTOR and these other let's say growth pathways in excess i personally think that you don't want to be suppressing mTOR all the time uh with uh, sinclair like he may be less let's say um concerned with that he uh, is much more eagerly suppressing mTOR uh, but i personally think that you know if you want to maintain muscle mass if you want to maintain bone density and uh yeah like just functional fitness for the later years then you do want to have like some balance between mTOR and these uh, other longevity pathways 
which I've made like many other videos as well. You can check them out that uh, talk about how to balance it and how do you do it. Perfectly balanced. So this video didn't cover all the things that uh, Sinclair takes. Uh, I actually found this uh, uh, basic blog post by Novos Labs as well that uh, October 2021 that uh, covers the ones that he takes that he talks about in uh, lifespan, his book. So uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN one gram a day per um, per day in the morning. Uh, I do think that uh, yeah, I think NMN is great. It uh, probably has some benefits on let's say health span at least, improving things like uh, insulin sensitivity and uh, energy levels. This blog post says that one gram is uh, pretty high and you need only 250 to 500 milligrams to be sufficient in uh, human studies they found that 250 milligrams is basically enough to like elevate any of the levels uh, but maybe like you know mm, higher doses maybe i don't know like yeah i don't think that higher dose is always necessary but uh, obviously sinclair who um, you know takes it more seriously is going to be safer on the safer side i also actually take myself one gram of nmn um, as well not always, I may take like a smaller dose sometimes and I may skip it also sometimes. Uh, but yeah, if I do take it, then I take like one gram. Uh, usually Reservatrol, one gram in the uh, morning. So um, yeah, I think that Reservatrol doesn't have actually that much evidence that it is beneficial or that it works. Like the animal studies are pretty limited and uh, they, they find it doesn't even work all the time in increasing sirtuins. And even if you do, sirtuins aren't always like actually beneficial for longevity, even in animals. Um, in, and there's no human studies either. And in fact, uh, resveratrol may actually be harmful to like exercise adaptations. There's a lot of some studies that, but even like 250 milligrams of resveratrol a day was able to blunt like uh, VO2 max from exercise in older humans. Uh, so yeah, the human studies actually find that resveratrol may not be good at all. And I'm not taking uh, resveratrol, and I think that you probably don't need to take it if you're taking like all the other things, like maybe spermidine or whatever. Metformin prescription drug one gram per day, 500 milligrams in the morning and 500 in, in the evening. <laughs> so that's quite a lot to one gram of metformin a day. Um, yeah, metformin does have actually a lot of uh, human studies that it reduces mortality and is beneficial for longevity, especially if you have diabetes. If you do have metabolic syndrome and diabetes, then it's going to be almost like a life saving drug. Um, if you don't have diabetes, but you're doing it for longevity purposes, then I'm not sure that it would be you know that good because you know Sinclair is already doing one meal a day and uh, that fasting period will already suppress his blood sugar levels and insulin quite low during the fasted window so he probably doesn't need to take metformin uh, at least like not every day and uh, similar to uh, resveratrol they can also like blunt some aspects of exercise adaptation so you are like just less fit and uh, less muscle and uh, you know it has some side effects uh, so I, I don't take metformin I don't think that Healthy people don't probably need to take it if you're exercising, if you're uh, doing fasting and those kind of things. If you're not overeating, then you don't need to take metformin. Maybe like, yeah, once a week, maybe 500 milligrams. If you're like super into longevity, you could take it with like no side effects. Uh, but taking every day, I don't think that is a good idea. But he uh, may, yeah, like he's probably like just more into it, <laughs> the uh, anti-aging longevity. Vitamin D3, he takes, he doesn't take the dose. Uh, yeah, I take that as well. I think that vitamin D is important for longevity. Vitamin K2, yes, I like vitamin K2 as well. He probably takes it. Statin, taken since his early 20s due to family history of cardiovascular disease. Um, not describing the dosage, uh, I don't take statins. Uh, I think that, yeah, if you have high cholesterol and, let's say, lipid uh, issues, then, yeah, statins can also be, like, life-saving. Uh, for regular people who don't have those issues, if you're not obese and uh, your blood work is fine, then you probably don't need to take statins either, in my opinion. Low dose aspirin, 83 milligrams per day. Um, so yeah, there is some um, epidemiology study that finds that uh, aspirin is reducing some you know, risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease by mostly being anti-inflammatory. Um, I guess it depends on yeah, like on your inflammation levels. If you have high inflammation or if you're over overweight, obese, then it could be beneficial in low doses, like 83 milligrams is fine. Um, even in higher doses, if you have actual, let's say metabolic syndrome, if you're not, like my inflammation levels were already like 0 0.1, which is, you know, <laughs> literally on the, the closest to the zero as possible. Um, when I did my test, um, and most of it is because of just not being obese, exercising and doing intermittent fasting. Um, I do, I'm, I do may find beneficial to take some uh, low dose of aspirin 
if you have like sleep deprivation, if you are under some sort of, I don't know, inflammation or oxidative stress, uh, that it can be beneficial, but aspirin in larger doses or more frequently taken can also be with some side effects and like causes bleeding or that kind of thing. So I don't think that, at least like you wouldn't want to take any more than 83, maybe 83 milligrams a day is kind of on the safe side. I'm not sure, but I think, think like more than that, like 500 milligrams or 100 milligrams every day may not be that good. Alpha lipoic acid, mm, yes, antioxidant, um, and um, not sure about the, let's say, longevity effects of alpha lipoic acid. Um, maybe there is some studies uh, that um, it could benefit like some model organisms, but I don't think that it actually is that impactful compared to the other things that he's taking. Like he's probably one of the least impactful of the supplements. Coenzyme Q10, also good for the heart. Yes, I am a proponent of CoQ10. I think even if you're healthy, you can benefit from CoQ10 because it's improving mitochondrial function and just energy levels. Mm, yeah. I don't think that um, it's probably not going to be harmful to take. Uh, various studies show that coenzyme Q10 doesn't extend uh, lifespan, and some studies actually find that CoQ10 can actually shorten lifespan. This the article says, which I'm not, you know, I haven't fact checked, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't think that it's going to be harmful. Smoke bomb. So overall, I think that you know a few things I agree with him, like NMN is you know good, uh, quercetin is good. Uh, I don't think resveratrol is good. I don't think metformin is good. Uh, vitamin D is good. Vitamin K2 is good. Uh, what else do you took? Um, yeah, fisetin is good. Reg some infrequently. So yeah, those are some pretty okay supplements. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of other things that he probably didn't talk about or he um, may have missed or he not aware of. I personally take like a few additional supplements like. Uh, like apigenin is also another CD38 in inhibitor. I'm not taking it all the time, uh, but sometimes then uh, I mentioned spermidine. I'm taking that as well. Uh, you know, my, I mean, things like some easy wins even, like uh, creatine. I think he should take creatine, especially if he's on a plant-based diet. It's going to be uh, like um, quite effect effective for him. Um, and um, yeah, maybe like calcium alpha ketoglutarate can sometimes be... Uh, good if he's interested in mTOR inhibition because uh, calcium alpha ketoglutarate also inhibits mTOR and you don't need to take like rapamycin or something like that <laughs> and uh, it has less, less side effects and it apparently is also like life extension in uh, animal studies and uh, slows down biological aging in humans uh, but yeah so if you want to you know check out all the other supplements that I'm taking then I have this free basically PDF with all the supplements that I'm taking when I'm taking in what doses how many times a week and so basically outline, you know, from the morning to the evening, all the sleep supplements or the exercise supplements or the morning supplements and all those things you can find in my uh, PDF, free, PD, free PDF, just, you know, put your email in and uh, get it. You can get it from seamland.com forward slash supplements. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.